Well, good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Another day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. On last week, we talked from the subject, the coat, the coat. And it was about blind Bartimaeus and uh, him. The emphasis was on him removing the coat so he could be healed from the condition of of blindness. Now I know that there was a little, it seemed like it was a trick to it, somewhat of a caveat because most folks would just focus on his natural ability to see and him coming to Jesus and Jesus healing him uh, of that disease uh, and, and giving him sight. But as I mentioned on last week, it's more than just visual sight. And so uh, today I want to follow up uh, with that subject matter, the coat, and I'm going to follow up with it with Jesus' response. We know that Jesus healed him, but but I, I want to go a little bit deeper in the text uh, so I can really bring out um, the deeper parts of what Jesus was trying to do, not just the surface parts, because I believe that many of us are plagued today because we continue to, to focus on the surface. And the surface is fine and well, and we do need those surface uh parts uh, to our life. If we can't see physically, we definitely need to be able to see. But we need to be able to see more than physically. We need to be able to see spiritually or we need to be able to see from a visionary standpoint. And these are the things that are hurting us more than physical sight. Because with uh, absent of physical sight, you can still navigate through life. Um, but absence of spiritual insight, you may miss your window, your door into heaven. So uh, there, in there lies a deeper understanding for us to come together and reason to understand what, 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 what was Jesus really trying to do. So uh, the first thing that I want to make mention of as we, as we bolt back on to last week uh, is that Bartimaeus had to remove the coat. He had to remove the coat. What am I saying to you? I'm saying that um, as we think about that this story in Mark 10, 46 through uh, 52, as we think about this story, the story, one of the things that we need to capture and understand with, uh, a more, with more tenacity is that you, the removal of the coat must take place. You have to get yourself out of what is around you, the what is draped on you. You have to remove yourself from that condition, from that environment, whatever that is. You have to identify that and you have to come out of it. Now, Jesus was there on site, but even Jesus being there on site, Jesus, uh, he did his part. But you have to do your part. And your part is, I have to get out of this. I have to get out of it. So you have to say, listen, I, I'm going to make a decision to step out of what is draped around me, to, to take off the cloak, to take off the coat, whichever way you want to put it, and you got to throw it to the side. You got to throw that to the side. So be, before we even go any further today, I, I want you just to think about that. And I want you to make a decision take it off. It's all about a decision. Things that we do today is about decisions. You have to make a decision. Take it off. I don't care what it is. I don't care what somebody told you, what, uh, what disadvantages that you have, what physical infirmities that you have, whatever it is, you have to take it off. I've had messages. You got to go back and listen to, look at, listen to the one that the faith of Abraham and, um, those that the, the need for healing, uh, all that it, it, it deals with aspects of faith. It deals with healing. It deals with deliverance. And so in this right here, we continue to tie it in because it, it still goes back to our foundation and which points back to Jesus. So you have to make a decision to remove the, the uh, barriers, the boundaries, the, per, the perimeter, because there is always going to be something that's going to box you in. And tell you how far you can go, what you can do, what you cannot do, what you're going to be subjected to. You have to make a decision that I'm coming out of that. So our objective today is that we're going to take it to the next level. 
It's not that we're going to ask for the, the fluff, the surface stuff, the, the things that we feel that we can't do without like a man, like, you know, a, a, a pinky finger, our sight. Um, sight is very important from a physical standpoint, but you can live without it. It's documented, it's proven. You can see blind people, they can get around, some blind folks can get around better than people that see, that can see. So uh, that those are the things that are meaningful, but there's there's things that's more meaningful. So we're, we're going to go deeper. Jesus gives Bartimaeus more than physical sight. He gives Bartimaeus vision. Yeah, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to lay hands on you. I know the scripture don't say that, but I'm just saying, you know, a lot of times Jesus touched and he laid hands on him. But in this particular case, Jesus didn't touch the man at all. In this particular case, Jesus spoke to, because see, when you look at what, what Bartimaeus brought to Jesus, uh, he, he brought to Jesus his faith. He brought to Jesus his faith. He did not bring to Jesus his condition, approached Jesus, but that wasn't what Jesus looked at. Jesus didn't look at the fact that he was blind. Jesus was seeing blind men all the time. It was folks sick all the time, laying folks all the time. But, but the thing that got Jesus' attention when this man, Bartimaeus, came to him, it was his faith that approached Jesus. And I continue to talk to, to, to uh, this audience about the need for God to recognize himself. He responds to himself. He does not respond to your problem. He responds to himself. So when Bartimaeus came up to him, Bartimaeus was full of something that, that Jesus the God in Jesus, the Christ of Jesus, recognized. And because of that, he did not have to touch him. Because of that, what Jesus said, your faith, your faith now has made you whole. Not, not, not my touch, not my power, not my authority. We know that it's, it's still Jesus' power and his authority and the Holy Spirit and all that, but you got to get out of that. You got to get out of thinking that Jesus is going to do it all. Yes, he is doing it all, and he has done it all, because he went to the grave, he got up, he, he experienced the cross, he got up with all power in his hand. We understand that. Salvifically, he is our Savior, he is our everything, but, but it's, it's more than that, because what Jesus wants us to do now is to experience him on earth. And I continue to talk to uh, us about the fact that uh, the scripture says uh, that whatever is done in heaven, Whatever, however it's done in heaven, I want it to be mirrored in the earth. So if you, if you, if, if wholeness is in heaven, then wholeness must be on the earth. It's, it's a mirror. When God made us in his image and in his likeness, his image is how did he appear? His likeness is how did he act? When he done that, he was saying that I want you to look like me, to identify with me, to be like me. That's what I want you to be. So therefore, you become little G's. And I keep saying that. I don't mean that disrespectful. Because I know a lot of folks that get religious and all that, they're going to say, well, what are you talking about? You know, uh, that we're supposed to be God. No, that's not what I mean. I'm trying to get you to think differently. I'm trying to get you to think like God. If you think like God, then you can do as God did. And that's why I continue to say that God said, let there be. And as God was saying, let there be, we are supposed to mimic what God said in the earth. So, so if God said, let there be, and it was what he said it was, then we have the authority, we have the wherewithal, we have the power to do the same thing, to say, let there be. Because now it is no longer us, the person, the physical man, the soulish man that is speaking. It is the God in us that is speaking. And so then we start to speak the things that God is speaking. Not the things that we speak. You come out of that because now you are immersed in the spirit. When you are immersed in the spirit, you lose the soul part of you, the flesh part of you. And so when you start to speak, you speak as God spoke. That's the reason why in one of my little uh, messages that I just kind of off the cuff, I, I said, I talked about which one of Jesus is talking. Is it Jesus the man or Jesus the God? Because when Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and he says, he says, Lord, uh, if it be possible, take this cup from me. That was Jesus the man. 
But but oh, but as he thought about that, and as he navigated through the 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 vision, the goal where he had to get to, he says, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. And as he said that, that was Jesus, the God, or Jesus, the Christ, that was talking. So there was two people that was talking. And one of the things that we have to we have to mature to and to get to is to know who's talking out of us. Is it you talking, the man, the woman, or is it God talking? If God is talking, that's, that's where the power is at. If you are talking, that's where the immaturity is at and you have to get to the power. This is uh, Face to Face Ministry and we will be right back.